Then Barnabas is named. Now Barnabas is almost like one of the apostles too. As a matter of fact, I think when you look up his feast day in June, you'll see that they list him as an apostle. Of course, he wasn't one of the 12, but he was so close to St. Paul and traveled with St. Paul, dedicating his life to the same work that the apostle Paul was doing, that Barnabas is considered a quasi-apostle. He was um, a Levite in the Jewish religion, so he was, as it were, a, a priest already in the, in the Jewish religion, but he took all his possessions when he was converted and he laid them at the feet of the apostles and he joined them. He attached himself, as I said, to St. Paul and died heroically too. Now then you skip a few years to St. Ignatius of Antioch. You know that some people say that St. Ignatius of Antioch, who we name now in the Nobis Quoque, that he is that little boy that Jesus had sit on his lap. Let the little children come to me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Some people say that I, I don't know. I mean, it's just a beautiful tradition that as a tiny little infant or a little boy, he actually touched our Lord. It would make sense because Ignatius was one of the most holy, devoted bishops you could ever imagine. Just reading his life, it, it sends chills up and down your spine when you, you see what, what love and devotion he had for his faith and for his flock. He was Bishop of Antioch, but he was taken to Rome to be thrown to the, to the wild beasts. Um, the Romans were persecuting the Christians. This was, I think, uh, uh, in the uh, early, very early part of uh, the second century, like 100 and 104, 105, somewhere around there when Ignatius of Antioch was killed. And uh, he was a very old man by this time, um, an elderly bishop, but he was uh, taken all the way to Rome, and he says, it's rather, rather humorous the way he speaks, he calls, he calls his captors, he calls them uh, panthers. He says that, you know, I'm surrounded by these 12 panthers. Let me see if I can find that quote. From Syria... Even to Rome, I fight with wild beasts. Because he already knew he was going to be thrown to the wild beasts. So he's writing this letter and he says, From Syria, even to Rome, I fight with wild beasts by land and sea, by night and by day, being bound amidst ten leopards. So not panthers, but leopards. Uh, he calls them leopards. Uh, being bound amidst ten leopards, even a company of soldiers, who only wax worse when they are treated kindly. So the more kind he was to them, the worse they acted towards him. Ten, ten soldiers who just who are brutal in their treatment of this old bishop. But you won't meet of a bishop who was more heroic or holier than Ignatius. And he, got, he did get thrown to the wild beasts. Remember, he prayed. He begged God because he knew. He said, you know, Lord, I read about or hear about so many people who get thrown to the animals and they don't get killed that the animals lick their feet and don't harm them. And so he said, please, let them kill me. I want to die as a martyr. I want my, how did he say it? I want, I want to be ground up like wheat. I want to be ground like wheat. Because he knew only if the seed of the faith is planted will Rome be truly converted. It was necessary. The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the faith. And Ignatius prayed that he might be martyred. And he got his wish, the animals, the, the tigers and the, the lions or whatever it was, they released on him. They killed him instantly. The next saint is Alexander. Now, St. Alexander was a pope who reigned from 106 to 115 A.D. He was a Roman by birth. And he spent his life, his entire life, was in the time of persecution. So as a young boy... Nero's persecution was already going on against the Christians. And all through his life, you know, he was having to hide out, you know, and celebrate Mass in secret places. 
And the, his, it's not, it's, it shouldn't strike us as strange that then Alexander was, was raised up to become Pope. He knew what the church was going through. He had lived it his whole life. And so he was made Pope and guided the church from 106 to 115. And he was decapitated on May 3rd, 115. Then Marcellinus is named. Now, he's much later. I think he was a martyr under Diocletian. So almost 200 years after Alexander. Well, Marcellinus and Peter are mentioned together because Marcellinus was a priest and he was thrown in prison and his, his cell had no light. He had no food. The floor was strewn with glass and he suffered it all in patience and silence. Now, Peter is attached to him because here's the thing. Peter was an exorcist, so he wasn't a priest yet. Remember, an exorcist was one of the steps to the priesthood. Peter was an exorcist, and he was put in jail, and the jailer heard that Peter was an exorcist. And the jailer, who wasn't Christian, said to Peter, my daughter's possessed. And he brought his daughter, this possessed child, to Peter. And there in prison, Peter delivered her from the devil. And the jailer was so grateful that he and his whole family went to take instructions. And they went to Marcellinus, the priest. Well, Marcellinus instructed the jailer and his family in the faith and the judge found out about it and he ordered both Peter and Marcellinus to be tortured. Peter, who had healed the girl from her exorcism, um, from her possession, and Marcellinus, who had given them inst the family instructions. So Peter and Marcellinus are named together because they died together in torture under the reign of Diocletian.